and uh, how do you uh, account for some of the limitations that are associated uh, with the private company uh, valuation all these kind of things and when i am talking about uh, a private company here the focus could be right from a sole proprietorship firm to uh, uh, a private corporation kind of uh, entities also any entity which does not uh, uh, which did not uh, issue the shares which are uh, publicly traded on the exchanges all those uh, companies we are considering as a part of the private uh, companies so just as a quick uh, characteristics uh, comparison scenario <coughs> if i have to see the differences between a public and a private company in uh, we can categorize them into company specific factors versus the stock specific factors which are the differentiators between the two so looking at generally the company specific most of the times what we see is in in terms of uh, the industry life cycle majority of the private sector firms are either in their initial phases or in the growth phases but very less of them you find in the maturity phase of the life cycle of course sometimes you may find them even in the decline phase but if the company is growing bigger and bigger and probably uh, getting more and more matured at some point or the other it may grow based on uh, the public based uh, equity capital itself so if at all uh, we see <coughs> that the company is still private there is a good chance that it is not that much uh, matured but of course whenever we are getting into the valuation we have to understand where in the life cycle that particular company is operating at and in general we see that there is a lot of limitation with respect to raising of capital so the asset basis are very are comparatively smaller when i am looking at uh, a public limited limited company versus a private firm i see that the private ones will have lesser number of assets because they have less access to capital and even the employee base could be much much smaller there could be a few exceptions here and there but in general this is the scenario <coughs> and because of all these reasons there is a possibility of inherent uh, risk that is built into the private company so when i am doing a valuation of the private company these kind of inherent risks also need to be taken into consideration i cannot use the same model which i am using for a public company to value a private firm then <coughs> even we see that the depth of the management is not too high because uh, a very high it's very rare that very highly skilled people or uh, uh, or highly qualified kind of a management team may not uh, be accessible to these uh, private firms to a great deal in comparison with the public firm and on the other side we see <coughs> that the control control and the ownership position is very strong in the hands of the management because uh, they hold the majority of the stake so most of the decisions and uh, uh, most of the actions uh, happen through the uh, through the owners itself which means though the other parties may exist as investors they most of the times exists as minority investors who invest only for the sake of investment but not having much of a control <clears throat> in the the better advantage i see is with respect to <clears throat> a long term focus because most of the time with a public listed firm we see that uh, because of the shareholders pressures and because of uh, uh, uh because of uh, shareholders playing a very key role in the uh, uh, uh in the stake of the firm the managers may not focus on long term projects which may not be profitable in the short term but turn profitable in the longer run so all these kind of things may not be experimented when it comes to a public limited firm but in private firm because of not too many pressures from the stakeholders or uh, various uh, 
other things management can very well focus on a long term perspective completely and of course uh, from the requirements or regulatory uh, perspective also though they are uh, uh, they, they may have to make a financial uh, reports and they may have to uh, file the financial report the level of disclosure the depth of the disclosure is not that heavy when it comes to a, a private firm of course there is a positive side to it there is a negative side because it can result in more of uncertainty it can result in more of a risk but at the same time it's a cost saving kind of thing from a company's standpoint and so all these kind of company specific uh, differences between the public and private some of them are advantageous and some of them have a negative impact uh, on the firm because most of the time even from a tax standpoint we see that most of the private firms they are very much concerned with the taxes now coming to the stock specific kind of uh, scenarios it's very whatever the equity even if i hold 10% 20% uh, stock in a private company it's not that liquid probably if i want to sell it off sell off a public stock i can sell it whenever i want but that's not the case with a private stock so finding the buyer finding an appropriate uh, buyer for that uh, stock is a very difficult <coughs> aspect so even that risk need to be taken into consideration while we are doing the valuation sometimes okay forget about the liquidity there could be restrictions on the selling itself initially agreement might have got signed up that you can't sell your shares for at least some predefined period of time so because of all these things even a marketability becomes a, or selling becomes a serious issue so even some kind of discounting has to be done for that also <coughs> and otherwise also you see that because the control is primarily in the hands of uh, very few people whatever the benefits or something that are uh, coming they grow more and more in terms of benefiting uh, the the ownership and it may be at the expense of the minority shareholders also so overall whatever we see is any stock specific factor it generally acts negatively only in terms of valuation whereas some of the company specific factors may act positive in terms of valuation but all in a nutshell if i have to summarize this there are some kind of significant differences that are existing between a public firm and a private firm as far as uh, the key characteristics are concerned which means the same key characteristics should go into the valuation process also <coughs> all right next whenever we talk about valuing a private firm or why does a private company require a valuation what is the prime motive behind valuing a private firm so this uh, session uh, in this session i would like to look at the three dimensions for which a private company gets valued let's say we are talking about uh, transaction based if i want some kind of external financing into the firm right external financing it could be in the form of uh, buyouts or venture capital investments or <coughs> any of those things i would like to get my company valued <coughs> at different points in time so whatever the value that comes out based on that the investors or the capitalists they do some kind of negotiations and come out with uh, investing in the firm the same way whenever a firm has to whenever a public company is planning to go to an uh, ipo that it has to get uh, valued so that uh, a particular price would be defined for the uh, a price a, a price band could be defined at the time of uh, going for an ipo probably the investment banks uh, do this kind of a valuation uh, exercise of this private company similarly when i want to sell off my company to get a better uh, deal uh, so for all these kind of transactions any kind of uh, 
compensation that we are planning to pl pay to our management based on the performance of the company. So it's better to know what is the worth of the company and some percentage of that could be paid as a compensation to the management. For paying or for making all these kind of transactions, we definitely uh, require a private company to be valued. Then <coughs> the valuation goes even from a compliance standpoint because there are a lot of aspects of uh, financial reporting wherein evaluation is mandatory, especially with respect to goodwill and impairments to the goodwill. Right, especially when I uh, focus on uh, goodwill and impairments or impairments of any uh, assets. So to to get especially the goodwill or intangibles. So from that uh, standpoint, I can use a valuation process and even from a tax standpoint to know uh, uh, to know the i mean even from a tax filing uh, standpoint the valuation is very much uh, required especially uh, you know especially some kind of uh, stake given to the other parties or especially uh, when uh, uh, <coughs> uh, when any property tax need to be paid the worth of the property needs to be evaluated so that requires a separate uh, valuation process altogether and the third dimension from where people uh, get into the valuation of the private firm is from a litigation standpoint wherein if shareholder has uh, filed some kind of uh, suits or some kind of damage claims or some kind of bankruptcy related uh, expenses and all to understand uh, those things and to do the settlements from that dimension also the private company is getting value. So, there is a definite uh, need for valuation of the private companies from all these specific dimensions. Then, so if that is uh, uh, if that is the requirement, how do you define the value? There are so many uh, definitions that are associated with value, right from the word fair market value, which uh, which is a very typical word, which says, assume that there is a hypothetical buyer who is willing to buy a particular uh, product or a service from a willing and an able seller in, uh, in uh, a no biased, unbiased kind of a transaction, no partial, no biased kind of a transaction, whatever the price that uh, uh, any hypothetical buyer who is fully aware of the product with full knowledge, with full ability, what is that he is willing to pay for the seller. That is what we call as fair market value. And uh, especially uh, as, as per the US GAAP or IFRS, if I am trying to find out uh, the fair market value, then we are calling as fair value for financial reporting or litigation kind of purposes. And sometimes we also use a word called investment value. This is not a market based value. Whenever I use the word investment value, it is the value that is specific to each buyer, whatever is perceived <coughs> by the buyer based on the benefit that it is going to give to him. Here, <coughs> each buyer, I may even look at what is the purpose of buying. Is there any kind of strategic intent behind the buying? Are there any synergies for that specific uh, buyer? So this is exclusive to a buyer because uh, he will incorporate the various uh, synergies because of uh, buying this particular asset. So he may value it at a slightly higher number compared to an other buyer. So this value is more and more specific to each buyer because he estimates the kind of future cash flows completely differently. He estimates the risk separately. So it is completely perceived based on the perceived synergies of the buyer we are trying to decide on the investment value. And when we are uh, looking at uh, intrinsic uh, value, it is purely what we call as a true value. So no mispricings as, as per the features or characteristics of the asset.